Now then, completely different subject. It may shock you to hear that one in ten men have visited an escort, and that's just the ones prepared to admit that they have. Screenwriter Andy Bodle has decided to speak out about his own addiction to call girls, an addiction that cost him his life savings, and he joins me now. Thank you so much for coming in. I think it's very brave of you, actually, to admit it, because so many men don't. And was it, was it just the fact that you... Were you shy, had trouble meeting girls, or what, what was it? It was to do with... Uh basically my love life up until the age of 30 was more or less disastrous oh. um, the first girl I liked at school um, set me a trap whereby uh, she found out I liked her and she invited me to meet her in a secluded corner of the playground and then when I got there trembling like a leaf she jumped out on me at, at me with a group of her friends and uh, shouted I wouldn't go out with you if you were the last person in the world oh that's vile what a horrible thing to do that's really bad no wonder you had a sort of you, you got, really went into your shell after that I would imagine and yes, it just got worse from then on, really. Um, poor wee thing, that's awful. Absolutely awful. So did you find that you just didn't have confidence around women? Not much. Um, I, uh, in fact, when I was 17, I tried to kill myself three times um, because of Jeez. being rejected by the same person. Um, I did have some girlfriends, I did, I did have some luck. But mm. uh, in my 20s, uh, one turned out to be an alcoholic, um, one girl turned out to be married, and the other one turned out to be a lesbian. So. It's not exactly been an, an easy road that you've travelled, no. that, that is absolutely for sure. But when you go to girls who are either prostitutes or call girls and you're paying them for your time, it's like a business transaction though, isn't it? Did you find it was like that or did you find that they treated you in a kind way or what, what was it like? There, there, there is a business element to it, but mm -hmm. you, you get that out of the way right at the beginning. You right. Hand over the money, she okay, counts so it. Okay, that's, so that's going. Um, other than that... Um, in my experience, most, most of the girls make every effort to make you feel mm -hmm. relaxed and right. warm and at home. And to be honest, that was what I was doing it for. It was that human contact. Yeah. yeah. It was... Um, Did it, the trouble was, though, that it, it became a bit of an addiction for you, didn't it? That you actually had to go back, back, back again. It came, and, and I guess that kind of substituted um, for, for a relationship with a... I feel like whatever a normal relationship is, but a normal relationship with somebody, you know, that, that kind of took over from that, didn't it? It did a little, yes. Uh, it was never... I, I hadn't actually intended to do it more than once. It's just right. that when I did it the first time, everything went so smoothly and... Right. Um, and you felt it, better afterwards. You I didn't, did. I, I you had didn't a bit feel more... in any way that this was a bad thing to do. You actually felt more confident and, and better within yourself. I did yourself. a bit more self-esteem. Right. I felt I could sort of face the world again. Um, because, uh, in fact, just before all this happened, I'd started losing my hair and that was the real crippling blow to my mm. self-esteem. Um, but uh, seeing this girl kind of reminded me that... Um, re revived my faith in human nature, right. basically. Even though, as we said, it is paying, you are paying for yeah. their time and for whatever else you want to do, um, and eventually, I mean, you, you've lost such a lot of money. Yes, well, as I say, I, I, in, in the first place, it was supposed to be a one-off, um, just, I think, £600 the first right. time cost me. Okay. Um, but because that went so well, um, a few weeks later, I still... Um, wasn't, wasn't getting any dates, mm. and I still had a healthy bank balance, so um, I raided it again. Mm. And um, at the end of about a year and a half, I'd spent um, £15,000. Goodness sake, so you spent all of your life savings, that all went, all your savings went. And, but, but from your point of view, I mean, I just wonder where you are now with that. I mean, do you have... When you, when you look back on what you did, are you, are you happy with the way that you are now? Do you feel that you are ready to have a relationship with somebody, or have you got more confidence? Well, um, it, it didn't all magically get better right. um, when I stopped um, seeing escorts. Um, there were a few horror stories after that as well. There was uh, the Latvian shop assistant who, on, on our third date, told me that um, I was. she wanted me to be boyfriend number four, as in f fourth concurrent boyfriend. Oh, right, got all going at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> there was the, um, the feminist who dumped me because uh, I earned less than her. And... Um, Anyway, there were a few more horror stories, right. but, but this time I was able to come at it with some perspective. Right. And I sort of picked myself up, dust myself off and, and carry on. And, uh, and you're writing a book about this, aren't you? You're actually, going to, you're actually going to do that about your experiences. Yeah, well, um, I'd always been a writer and mm -hmm. around about my mid-30s, my writing career picked up. Perhaps because life had so kindly thrown me so much mm. good material. Mm. Um, and anyway, I sold a few scripts to um, American TV. And then a female colleague, colleague of mine one day... Um, suggested, she said, don't get me wrong, um, your scripts are very funny, but to be honest, your real-life experiences are funnier so, right. um, and more moving mm. and more real, so um, maybe you should put those into a book instead. Right, and that's what you're going to do? Yeah. 
And do you think that that will be a, a way of kind of getting over it all and, and maybe sort of looking ahead to the future? Uh, well, it, it already has helped in a way because while I was researching the book, um, I was looking at thousands of um, internet dating profiles to find out what women want. Mm. One of the women, uh, women whose profile I was looking at sent me a message saying, would you like to meet for a date? Oh. And, um, so I did, and uh, ten months later we're still together. So. Fantastic, that's really good. And she's all right, but you've, you've obviously told her about your past and told her... She's been amazing, actually. Yeah, yes. Very supportive of you. Yeah, um, she realises it was a long time ago. Right. I was a bit lonely, a bit naive then, yeah. and uh, she knows I'm a different person now. No, I'm really glad that you got over that, because you were pretty damaged by an awful lot of, an awful lot of very women that should know better, very unkind people, to, to put it mildly. Yeah, yeah. Very much so. Listen, thanks ever so much for coming in. Do come back in, uh, you know, when the book is out and come back and tell us all about I'd love that. To. It'd be really interesting. It'd be good to talk to you a lot more. Thank yeah. you for being so honest. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed.